Most people won't be able to tell they've got deer on their place unless they see one. Having said that, there are a lot of people out there who are very good at, at picking up changes on their property. So areas like this, where you can see that there's trees at the background and an area in front that'll allow deer to come out and bed down, but get away quite quickly if they're disturbed, are critically important to look for sign. Having said that, if you've got a reasonably good fence around your place, funnily enough, don't look on the inside, look on the outside. You can see deer prints on the outside or deer scat, then you can rest assured that you've got deer in, in and around your area. The other thing, of course, is to look for damage to seedlings, for rub marks on trees and plants that are chewed. Yeah, what we're finding in, in lots of peri-urban areas are, if there's a corridor of trees, a creek line and your property or your land holding backs onto that area, you will find that deer will move in and out of that corridor and then come out of those places of a night time. Certainly we've got video footage of deer in people's backyards and people have never known that they've had deer other than a security camera has picked up deer in their backyard. One of the things that we're finding is that because deer are now uh, getting used to human activity, they, they're quite happy to, to remain in a vegetation corridor and then adopt what we call a cryptic behaviour, which is a nighttime uh, behaviour, and come out of a nighttime and feed maybe on your gardens, maybe on a golf course, and then move back to those corridors, those treed corridors of, of a daytime where they might bed down. The other thing that you might find that you're hearing strange grunting sounds or roaring sounds of a night time. And that can be when stags are in, in the rut or coming up to the rut. You might even hear a kerfuffle or a, a wrestling match in and around trees at the back of your place. And that can be stags uh, fighting. Know the numbers. Are you seeing two feral deer? Are you seeing 10 feral deer? Are you seeing a male? Does it have antlers? Are you seeing a female? Are you seeing juveniles? Uh, those bits of information are essential to any sort of feral deer management. It can be quite hard to actually identify how many feral deer are on someone's property. However, a great way is to count them if you are seeing the feral deer. Write down a number or have a look at the scats and tracks. Is there one set of tracks? Is there more than one set of tracks? That can then give you an indication on roughly how many feral deer you might be experiencing and might be impacted by. We were doing renovations on our house and my son was here doing some work on it for us and a, a deer ran down from up, up the hill a bit, down you know, behind the back of our place and my son sang out, Mum! And uh, I said, oh wow, a deer! That's not exciting anymore. That's terrible now. But, you know, at the time we thought, wow, that's so exciting. Fancy having deer in our property and, you know, nature, how wonderful nature is. <laughs> We're quick to realise that they're very destructive. And then heavy hoofed animals, they're not meant for Australian landscapes. So they do a lot of damage, even if they don't eat it, they trample everything. Oh, look, from the community members, it's generally urban gardens rose bushes, veggie gardens and things like that and that's upsetting. In regards to our environmental volunteers, our friends of groups and land care, they'll often report a fair bit of rubbing and uh, obviously a fair bit of impact on the pick of new growth. Some of the ecologists have said to me that the, the deer impact could potentially be greater than the impact that weeds have on our fragmented ecosystems in town, so it's a pretty high priority for us to manage.